My name is uh, Perry Whaley. I'm the CEO of an uh, organization called Build a Life Old Man of Action, uh, located in uh, Stonecrest, Georgia. Um, we've been in existence for about seven years, and uh, we've done a lot of different things and events in the community here in Atlanta. Uh, today, this very special 2020 Build a Life Old Summit was brought together by a group of men called the Build a Life Old Brotherhood Alliance. Um, we went to Raleigh, North Carolina to meet with Terrell Midget and, and we had great conversation, great fun. We said, well, hey, let's do something with this. And from that point on, we conversated, we communicated, and we all found out that we had gifts that we could bring to the table to make life easy for uh, other people who had a bit of LIGO and people who didn't have a bit of LIGO and the family members. And so we thought that this March 2022, that we would come together to bring a community of people together to embrace um, love, peace, and like I say, I'm soul trained soul. And uh, all I can say is that the summit has been everything that we thought it was. We started out at the Hawks game, uh, meet and greet. We had an opportunity to meet Dominic Wilkins. He took some pictures with us. We also had an opportunity to um, socialize with others, other communities at the game, other, other nationalities. So it helped us to get prepared for today, which has been a, a phenomenal day. And uh, all I can say is this, I hope that we can continue on our journey. I hope that we will always entertain the fact that we need to change other people's lives and not think about ourselves at all times. And so something I want you to take away with this, how much do you really love yourself? And if this was you, what would you do? And like my favorite saying is, opportunity and energy breed success. Ask yourself, how much success do you have in your life? And thank you for that. Um, I think more so the acceptance was when I did um, depigment and then I did go on social media and looked for, I actively sought out other vitiligo, uh, people with vitiligo, other vitiligo communities, vitiligo groups on Facebook and Instagram. When I actively sought them out and, you know, added myself and start talking to those people, that helped with my self-esteem and my acceptance of who I am and, you know, that I'm now, you know, part of this community of people that have vitiligo. That really did help me, like having, even though these are people I haven't met, <laughs> but to see that they've gone through the same journey or are still going through it or they've accepted themselves and they're more confident in who they are, that helped me as well. I was 24 years old when I acquired the LICO and uh, I was under some unusual conditions. Um, I was incarcerated for 10 years, and that's when the bitter LIGO started to uh, surface. Now, do I know what truly caused it? They say stress. They say uh, autoimmune. I don't really know, but that's where it occurred. And um, so I'm 24 to 56 is what it looks like now. So what you see me talking to you in the camera is what bitter LIGO has become in my life. So the first time I realized I had vitiligo was when I was 23 and a spot had come up on my hand, it was like a little dot. You know, my brother had took a picture of me and at first he thought it was like a glare in the photo, but I was like, no, it's just a little, you know, dot that came up on my skin. I don't know where or what happened and how it occurred, but yeah, I mean. And then I did start going to dermatologists once it started forming a little more, like it starts spreading all over my hands, both hands, and then like a little bit on my lips here and on my feet. And so I start going to dermatologists trying to see, you know, can I get some type of cream or something? Like, what could I do to reverse this? I don't want this bit of I don't want it. And, you know, they were telling me that they could, you know, prescribe me some, some steroid creams. I got to rub it on my hands every day. And it was just becoming a bit much. And the cream would itch. And I didn't see anything repigment. And it just continued to spread, spread even more so. 
and then um, within about maybe three, four years, it progressed to the point where it was, you know, fully over my entire body. My face was the last part of my body to, you know, just completely become what we quote is called universal vitiligo, where I have it. My entire body has depigmented. I was diagnosed with vitiligo when I was 35 years old, and as I said before, I was I had already assimilated into the man that I wanted to be, and then here comes vitiligo around my eyes and mouth. I didn't know what it was. I go to the dermatologist, and they explain to me that you have vitiligo. Uh, the good news is it's, it's, it's not terminal. It's not going to shorten your life. But the bad news is um, there's a possibility that it will spread um, to small places or maybe even your entire body, completely changing the way you look. So my life immediately took a, a new direction and that's what brought me here today. I first developed my vitiligo in about, I said 1996, it could be 97, it's been a while. Um, and it started on my head, it's just as a small spot and then later it started to progress. When I first realized I had vitiligo, I was preparing or getting ready for work one morning, rushing, trying to get out of there to, to beat the Atlanta traffic. Um, so I was rushing, putting on makeup, and then I just saw this small white spot on my forehead, right at my hairline. And so I just initially just brushed it off, thinking um, that it may have just been a little spot that I had on my forehead, maybe makeup. And then I brushed it again, thinking, did I burn myself? And, um, but after that second brush, I knew right away what it was. My grandmother had vitiligo but she was the only person in my immediate family who had vitiligo. So for me, immediately I knew. And it did scare me initially. Um, my change happened slowly. Um, again, my vitiligo started in 2014. So for me, that was almost, uh, almost 10 years ago for me. Um, not quite 10 years, but it was um, in 2014, so I'm coming up on 10 years with vitiligo. Um, but for me, my vitiligo um, went really, really slowly. Um, that small spot I started out with um, turned into a second spot on the back of my hairline. And it took about, I'll say about five years before it really started to spread. In 2019, is when I truly noticed that my vitiligo was starting to spread and it was really nothing I could do about it. And that was when I finally made the decision to go see a dermatologist about it. And, um, and that was the first year I decided to take some medication for my vitiligo. I first discovered that I had vitiligo when I was about five years old, probably in like kindergarten. When I first discovered the first spot, it was on my pinky, my right pinky knuckle. Vitiligo, you're beautiful, so lovely. My name is Mark Braxton. I will be your MC for today. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina, and yes, as you can see, I also have vitiligo. So once again, welcome to the first annual, and I'm going to call it here today, it is the first annual Vitiligo Summit, sponsored by the Vitiligo Brotherhood Alliance. I know you will have, absolutely, I know you will have a wonderful time learning from one another, fellowshipping today, celebrating and supporting one another as we continue our Vitiligo journeys. We'd like to let you Good morning. Come on, good morning. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now come on, say good morning, God. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all get sit down for me. I'll make you go long. I'm here. But this is a blessing to be here. A blessing to be here. Just want to come and give greetings. Come give greetings today. I'm so proud of uh, Perry. Uh, who's a member of our church, faithful, 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 pulling this together and asking me last year, last year, Pastor, we love for 
our church to be the host church. So we welcome all of you. We welcome all of you. Thank God for these brothers, this board. That's the problem with a lot of our young kids. They believe everything somebody else writes about them that don't know. And uh, if it's good stuff, they think they're hot stuff. And if it's bad stuff, they go hide in the closet. And I had my days when I hid the closet, when I wore gloves and hats, I kept my hands in my pocket when I was 12 years old and it was 90 degrees outside because I was embarrassed of who I was. But I'm not anymore. God has given me that strength. And I want to thank you. sure that no one saw my face patchy or um, you know my hands I would I would even wear long sleeve short sleeve I mean I would wear um, sh uh, no shorts I would always have pants on I was always very insecure about it for a while and and actually um, um, when my face and my skin did become patchy I actually removed myself off of all social media because I just wasn't happy with you know how I look, honestly. And I wasn't part of any type of communities or, you know, or knew a lot of people that had been a I go where I could go and talk to them and express how I'm feeling and, you know, share stories. It was just literally me, just me and my family trying to understand what's going on with me as well. I would make dermatologist appointments and go and try to, you know, see if there was something they could do, maybe get light therapy. I know they talked about UV light therapy to try to repigment. And it just seemed like nothing worked for me. So, you know, at one point I just had to, you know, decide to just accept myself, you know, and accept the change in my skin. But for the longest I was covering up my skin with makeup. I would go and buy a derma blend, that expensive makeup, and wear it and you know have to keep replacing the bottle you know every couple of months because i used it every day even for my hands i would put it on my hands as well even if i wore sandals i would put the derma blend on my toes and stuff to try to cover up the you know the uneven skin tone or the patchiness in my skin tone but you know once it started to like really deep pigment and I kind of was evening out with my skin tone and it was just all white. I kind of started to, you know, be a little more self-confident, I guess, because I just didn't like the, the patchiness of it. I know a lot of people, when I talk to them that have been a lot of a lot of them, you know, say the patchy phase is the worst phase. It just, just the unevenness of it. But I always tell people how I felt is similar to like a teenager who's getting acne all over their face. They don't like it. They want to do something about it. They want to use face creams and face washes to get rid of it. You know, you wake up and you have a big bump and you want to get rid of that bump. That's how insecure I felt when I had vitiligo on my skin. A year, uh, about a year and a half into my um, vitiligo journey, I was looking on social media for like people like myself uh, because I was looking for hope. I was looking for light. I knew that there was light at the end of the tunnel, but I just couldn't see it. It was all dark. It was, you know, I wasn't married at the time. So the whole, the whole experience of, am I going to die alone? Am I going to find a partner? That pressure just was just compounding on itself. So I was on social media looking for other people like me, and I ran across a, a man called Perry Whaley. And um, with, within two minutes of talking to Perry online, he tells me to call him. He calls me on the phone, we have a conversation, and instantly, in a matter of 10 minutes of talking to Perry Whaley, energy and, and hope and light just, just fell on me. So Perry has been an instrumental part of my journey because he gave me that spark that I needed to get up and start living and, and stop hiding. Uh, it, it took me quite some time. Um, I, I go back to 2019. So think about it. 1996 to 2019, I struggled with my good life. Um, meaning it affected you know everything from work to 
social circles to relationships. In 2019, um, there were there were several things that happened. There are different comments made to me by kids in the camp. One little girl kept calling me a butterfly, and and I didn't get it at first. She just kept saying, "You look like a butterfly," and I'm like, "Why am I a butterfly?" But one day I started thinking, I said a butterfly is a caterpillar that knows that no matter how much people look at it and say it's ugly, the beauty is not about the outside, it's what's on the inside. And it really made me start looking at myself differently. Then I had a, I was in a relationship that abruptly ended, I was told I was insecure, had low self-esteem, and what it did, it gave me the, the drive to say, you know what, there are things I have to do to change myself. Because if I'm not loving myself, no one else can love me. So I had to love me first and be that love story. And then from there, people see my confidence and, and that I can evolve and change. So for me, when I initially got vitiligo in 2014, I was, I think, in denial. Um, I kept thinking maybe I could, it would go away. But I finally, I had family members um, who encouraged me, go to the doctor, maybe they can give you something to slow it down. Um, there are a whole lot more advancements than what they had when my grandmother had it. So I was encouraged to go to the doctor. Went to the doctor four years later, and I knew it was vitiligo, but she confirmed for me that it was vitiligo. She gave me some options, um, gave me some medications I could take. I actually started taking medication for the first time, and um, but I stopped taking the medication simply because when I went in about six months later, she told me at that time that we were gonna wait three months because she said at that time that it could affect my kidneys. And I've never been one to take medication, but that really made me say, that's okay. I'm just gonna live with it, I'm going to accept it. And um, that was when I made the decision to no longer take internal medications, but I continued with the creams for about another year, and I now I no longer take medication at all. Oh, everything. Oh, God, you know God created everything. He made Michael Jackson, okay? Now, you look at Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, one of the biggest entertainers of all time. Maybe, arguably, the biggest. World renowned, you know what I'm saying? World renowned, but from birth, it was noted that from birth, Michael Jackson didn't even know what Michael Jackson had been like. You see what I'm saying? See, God already had a plan for Vitiligo to be on a world scale, on a major scale. See what I'm saying? God already had that plan before Michael Jackson, New Hitman, Joe Jackson, whatever came in the He already made Michael Jackson Vitiligo. Michael Jackson knew there was going to be 1% of the world population that would come along. I'm not saying Michael Jackson, God knew. And it'll be 1% of the world population that would come along after the life of And it'll be a people that would need something to, you know, kind of, you know, latch on to for confidence, whatever the case may have been. And you have Michael Jackson here. He's one of the world's biggest, most infamous star he had after the life of That's documented, that's proven. You know, but at the same time, I want to make another point of that. Michael Jackson did not understand the assignment. You see what I'm saying? Michael Jackson did not embrace his bit of life. Had he embraced his bit of life, maybe we wouldn't have to, you know, still walk around with the question marks about what it is we have or whatever. You learn to sell the things that you can't change. I sell for the news, yeah, I know that pain. But you can't change the business, God, go in your pain. Damn, why you love yourself? Everything all change. Damn, why you love yourself? No more sad Being married to someone who has vitiligo has been actually rewarding. Um, I always share the story of when Perry and I met, I heard him before I saw his face. And, but when I met him, it all made sense to me. But I remember when I first heard him and then I turned around and finally saw his face, his face I remember thinking, good for him, because he showed so much confidence 
and he has so much energy as most of us know and I think just putting those two together it just made me fall more and more in love with him but for him what I see in him is this person who just like exudes just it just pours out confidence but he's also like one of the biggest um, motivators I've never never met anybody like him I promise you I haven't and um, I, I feel blessed I feel grateful and thank you for that <laughs> but honestly just meeting other people who have been like or who are friends with them they all share the same sentiment and they all talk about how he has been such a blessing in their lives. And when I think about your question, being married to someone who has been like that, um, I think it's just um, it's it's a unique gem. It's a unique blessing because I've learned so much from him in just being who he is and how he blesses other people by encouraging them to use their um, their courage that they, most of them probably didn't realize they had. And he's just, you know, I, I'm so, I'm just so blessed. I couldn't have asked for a better man. I do consider myself a leader within the Vitiligo community. Um, I'm one of the leaders for the North Carolina Vitiligo support community. I wrote a book called Embracing Your Higher Self. Um, I felt like there were other things that I wanted to do, but I felt like this was something that was more meaningful and more needed. Um, I'm not necessarily doing this this book for me, I'm doing this for the for who I was seven years ago and for that person who is walking through that door that I walked through seven years ago who is lost and, and, and maybe going down that dark rabbit hole of depression. Um, you are not your skin. It's hard to to it's hard to come to that understanding on that side of things, but on this side of things when you have a different perspective, you can tell someone, hey you are something more than what you look like. You are more than what the mistakes you made. You are more than what your parents or your teachers or your preachers, whoever have imparted on you, you are more than that. And it's, in, and it's up to you to figure out who that is and what that is. And once you embrace that higher thing that you are, that you are capable of, your possibilities are limitless. And you won't care about what people think because you will know who you are and everything else will just come. Now I am a fully functioning entrepreneur. I own the CEO of Record Label 100 House Entertainment. I have multiple artists. And also, um, I'm you know, full-time rapper, full-time rapper slash entrepreneur. I wanted to go back and talk a little bit about the name and the name of my group, So Rare They Stare how the name was originated. The name so rare because less than 2% of the world's population has vitiligo. And they stare because a lot of people just don't know what it is or we're so unique. That's how I like to look at it. But the mission for the group is to educate and to encourage. Educating those who don't have vitiligo as well as those of us who do to know what vitiligo is. <laughs> I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna let Coach sing, cause I'm gonna let Coach sing. <laughs> you gotta sing or dance, what one y'all want? You gotta sing or dance.
in the name of Jesus. We love you and we thank you for what you're doing and how you're moving. Thank you for education and awareness. I've been blessed today. Heard what I said. Love you now. Helps you know that person who 
may not, you know, have that support system at home. They'll see that and they'll reach out or maybe we'll see them and reach out to them, you know, and just impart that, you know, you're still a beautiful person inside and out. Um, still continue to be who you are. Honestly, you don't need the makeup. I mean, you really don't need the makeup. You know, I've even had people, you know, come up to me in Walmart and, well, a guy came up to me, oh my God, I just wanted to tell you nothing that he was trying to hit on me. Just, oh my goodness, you're so beautiful. Just random people. And they felt a little weird at first when I'm like, who are you? You don't need to say that. You know, trying to be all humble and don't need it. But when I went home, I was like, you know what? That really helped me. I really appreciate that person. Thank you so much for saying that to me. You know what I mean? Just reaching out to other people. Just come out of that shell. Even if it's one other person with your life, they'll reach out. And they'll grab you and pull you into all the other you know, vitiligo communities that are out there and other people that are out there that have vitiligo. And I was just, you know, hearing that it's five different types of vitiligo. You know, there's the universal, the focal, segmental. No matter what type you have, you're still part of that vitiligo community. So just reach out and, you know, speak to someone else who has vitiligo. It's the whole community out there waiting for you. The main thing I would want anybody to know about themselves is that from childhood, we have trauma that we don't even think about anymore. The, the beatings we took, the, the whatever happened in your family, I don't know. There, there, there is some level trace of trauma. And when something like vitiligo comes along and rips that band-aid that you've had on all those years, all of those insecurities come flooding back. And you realize, man, I thought I was over that thing that triggers me to be angry, triggers me to feel self, no self-worth, triggers me to feel like I'm not worthy. All of those things will come flooding back when people are staring at you constantly and, and, and you're looking inside for that thing and then you realize, oh my goodness, I got this vault full of trauma that I have never addressed. So this book, this project will walk you through how I made it going through that process of unpacking that stuff, dealing with it in a healthy way, and then coming out on the other side knowing that that doesn't define you. What defines you is who you are on the inside and what God says you are. And from that point on, you'll be able to endure anything and, and walk strong. Uh, my main message I want to give people watching this is no matter what you go through, what place, what area, where you are in the world, just always remember to be you. You know, and it's always beautifulness inside of being yourself. So be you always. Okay, so recently I had the opportunity to go to a paint party. And this was my second time going to one. And when the instructor gave us instructions, told us about the different colors on the palette, most of the ladies in the room were African American. Or pretty much everyone in the room was African American. And you know, us as African American, I call us the chocolate rainbow. We have so many different colors. Well, I actually, um, there was a black, a white, um, different colors of brown and yellow. Well, when she was telling the ladies how to mix up to get the brown, I was saying to myself, well, I'm, I'm not, most of my color is not brown. And I actually got emotional when I was painting this. I actually started crying and um, didn't realize that I was going to get emotional. So I started out, um, I started out painting the legs and I was using the lighter color just like what's up top. But I started crying because I started thinking about how my skin is and I've got spots all over my body. And um, so I, I did, I just started crying and. Um, didn't say anything to anyone, but the ladies that were next to me, they actually saw what I was doing. I was putting the different spots, and they thought it was cool. But again, as I mentioned earlier, how vitiligo doesn't affect, doesn't hurt us, but it does mess with you psychologically. So even doing this portrait, portrait, um, it just kind of touched me. But I'm very proud of the portrait that I painted. Um, it's a reflection of my body. My body is actually 
pretty much the top half of my body is this color. This portrait reflects my body. And uh, I'm very proud of it. also known as GIFT. GIFT exists to provide an education and voice for the underserved. We hope you enjoyed our program and we look forward to bringing you more soon.